He's quite knocked it out of court, so it sort of lives to fight another day, leading to a modification of the original general problem we started with, and then the algorithm goes all around the houses again. That's how climate science should be done, in a series of disciplined, rational, organised, scientific steps. It's not what happens in real life, as we shall see. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to check the climate consensus. We're not going to do what the ABC does. <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to ask some questions. We're not going to say, oh, we just believe the consensus. Oh, yes, yes, please, can we have another grant? No. What we do is we check. So let's start by looking at a published scientific paper showing an alarming increase, as I think you'll agree, in category three, four, and five Atlantic hurricanes from 1970 until the present. This was published in 2006. Oh, it's very frightening. And what did the paper say? Well, of course, it's all because of global warming. Well, no, it isn't. What? <laughs> all we have to do is put in the data, which he somehow felt expedient to leave out, going back to the 1940s, and we see there's absolutely nothing unusual at all about recent hurricane trends, and we'll see a bit more about hurricane trends later on. And then, of course, we have Al Baby, <laughs> Al Gore, I believe it is appropriate to have an over-representation of factual presentations on how dangerous it is. Now, first of all, anyone who talks like that, nobody should believe him for a moment. <laughs> And what he's doing, you know, boiling it down, he's saying, I'm going to lie and lie and lie. Do you understand what I'm saying here? <laughs> Good. Because um, I don't. Anyway, so here we have the publicity poster for Al Gore's mawkish sci-fi comedy horror movie. And this extraordinary poster appears to show the temperature rocketing up in the 20th century. Ooh, uh, golly gosh, we're all doomed. Now then, is there anything anybody notices which is just a little bit wrong with that graph? Yes, time, our baby, cannot run backwards. <laughs> this line was not drawn by any scientist nor any computer. It was drawn like most of the rest of that movie, as you've heard from our gallant chairman tonight, by a public relations agent. It has nothing to do with science. And indeed, of Gore's imminent 20-foot sea level rise, the judge in the High Court case, which you've also heard our chairman speak about, where nine serious errors in that movie were identified, said this, and I shall try and deliver it in that custard-filled voice which the High Court seems to affect. And uh, the court said, the Armageddon scenario that he depicts is not based on any scientific view. <laughs> it's like that. Scientific view. <laughs> not that. that was what the judge said. And he had heard three days of detailed scientific argument on both sides of the case. And it was the last time the climate left ever went into a genuine legal action against people who didn't believe what they were saying. There have been many sweetheart, sweetheart actions Massachusetts v. EPA for the listing of polar bears where both sides wanted the same result and the Supreme Court saluted and rubber stamped it. Those sweetheart actions are a very characteristic thing among the left. The court should have refused to entertain any such case, but no, it nodded it all through. The polar bears were listed as threatened. We'll see more about them in a moment. But first, a little bit more about that sea level point. Because Al Gore says in his movie that because of the melting of two ice sheets, Greenland and the West Antarctic. Sea level is going to rise by 20 feet imminently. But in fact, the IPCC says that because of those two ice sheets, the amount of contribution to sea level rise will be over the whole of the next 100 years, six centimeters, two and a half inches, not 610 centimeters, which is 20 feet. So there is a hundredfold exaggeration by Al Gore. I'm going to do this big, big. So then, did he believe his own ludicrous projection? Well, no, of course he didn't. Here is a map showing at point A the $4 million condo that Al Gore bought in 2005, the very year he was making that movie, 
And you see the tower there. It's a real swank tower in which he bought this compound. And its address is Fisherman's Wharf. Um, two words which might have given him a clue that this building was really quite close to the allegedly rising ocean. He plainly didn't believe his own forecast, but he did believe his capacity to get monstrously rich by it. Please, sir, where's the chairman? Can I change sides? It's so much better paid. Well, here are the polar bears we mentioned earlier, um, and Gore, uh, for once, actually cites a scientific paper. He cites it wrong, of course, but he does cite it. And what he says is, a scientific study shows, for the first time, they're finding polar bears that have drowned, swimming long distances to find the ass. Swimming long distances to find the ass. And so here is the actual... Uh, map from the paper, four dead polar bears, who were, golly gosh, shiver shiver, hold the front page. And what have we got in fact? Four dead polar bears. Did any of these polar bears, according to the paper he was quoting, die or because they were trying to find the ice, or I should say fan the ice? No. They died because there was a big storm with high winds and high waves and they got swamped or as we scientists call it, shit happened. <laughs> I also checked a little further, and I found that sea ice extent in the Beaufort Sea over the 12 years preceding uh, Gore's movie had in fact hardly changed at all. It had gone up a little, if anything. So there's no basis at any point for Al Gore's story. It was complete fiction from start to finish. And here's a further evidence of this, because in those parts of the Arctic where the temperature on the left had uh, got warmer, in this case red means getting warmer, which is a fairly normal use of it, and then on the right the polar bear populations increased, where it got cooler in blue, they did. <coughs> so this appears to suggest that the polar bears quite like warmer weather. Why would that be? Because they evolved from black bears who came from the land, and they are warm-blooded creatures, just like us. If the Arctic gets warmer, they're just going to love it. They're going to have a ball. <laughs> and you heard about who? Mount Kilimanjaro. There it was in 1970, and again 30 years later, with most of the ice having gone, even though the photographs were taken at more or less the same time of year. Well, once again, Al Gore takes the scare story, immediately attributes it to global warming. But the mere fact of warming doesn't tell us the cause. And the mere fact of ice melting, as we shall now see, doesn't even tell us that there's any warming. You may think that if ice melts, gee, that can only happen because of warming. But what I did, because I'm old-fashioned and I check stuff, is I thought I would look up what is the record from the satellites which can monitor this continuously and have done for the last 30 years. What is the temperature change? What's the temperature trend at the summit of Mount Kilimanjaro? over the last 30 years. Here it is. As I think you will see, there is no trend to speak of. And so it wasn't any kind of warning that caused the ice to go. In fact, in that part of Africa, Central Africa, over the dozen years or so before Gore's movie, there had been regional cooling. And that regional cooling and the consequent drying of the air, compounded by imprudent post-colonial deforestation at the foot of the mountain, had caused the ice to go from its solid state to its gaseous state, without going through the liquid state of being water, by a process known as sublimation, which happens in very dry air. Nothing whatever to do with global warming. So once again, the moment we do a little bit of science and a little bit of checking, all these scare stories fall away. Here is a record of the uh, ice extent at the summit of Kilimanjaro, the middle one of those three lines there. And what it shows is that most of the ice on Kilimanjaro had gone by 1936, when Hemingway wrote The Snows of Kilimanjaro, his great novel. And therefore, the warming that we might theoretically have caused since then has not much, if at all, contributed to the loss of ice on Kilimanjaro. 
You've already seen also that global sea ice extent 